they live in our brains doing the jobs in our brains. They don't just, they're not just hanging out there for fun. They're, that's, that's where their work is. They don't, enzymes don't have work-life balance. This is going off the rails already. <laughs> Hit me, producer pots. Is this food truly deadly? Can you please tell me what the deal is with Brazil nuts? <laughs> wow. Um, that's a fascinating question because uh, Brazil nuts, hypothetically, not even hypothetically, you could overdo Brazil nuts. So the nutrient that Brazil nuts have that makes them so incredibly valuable, that gives them such a high Nutribor score, sort of a measurement of total nutrients per calorie is selenium. So a single Brazil nut has about 90 micrograms of selenium. The uh, recommended dietary uh, intake for selenium is 55 micrograms for an adult male or female. So one Brazil nut is like 175-ish percent of the daily value of selenium. So selenium is a really, really important uh, mineral to get enough of from our diets. But like a lot of nutrients, not we have some nutrients that we have such a easy time getting rid of excess. We really don't have to worry about overdoing it. So that's the case for a lot of B vitamins, for example. Like you could just have you could have a ton of it, and your kidneys will just go. Ugh, this is this is too much riboflavin, and we just get rid of the excess. For most minerals um, and also the fat soluble vitamins, we we have a hard time processing when we consume too much. And so we end up really wanting our diet to supply an amount in a happy medium. So we want to be hitting the daily value, but hitting our uh, dietary reference intake level. Like how much do we actually need for all of the different biological processes in the body that use that nutrient? But we want to stay well clear of what's called the tolerable upper limit. So this is a like maximum amount that is set based on uh, chronic toxicity levels. So uh, chronic toxicity is what happens. There, we have two, type, two types of toxicity. There's acute toxicity. So big dose of something that so much that it's toxic and all bad symptoms happen. And then chronic toxicity is the dose that you're exposed to every day that over weeks to months uh, would develop into symptoms of toxicity. So with selenium, the chronic toxicity level is 900 micrograms of selenium per day. So the tolerable upper limit is set below that to give some buffer. So the tolerable upper limit is set to 400 micrograms, I'm fairly certain. So one Brazil nut supplying 90 micrograms per day, if you have four and a half Brazil nuts in a day, you're actually at the tolerable upper limit for selenium. And if you have 10 Brazil nuts in a day, you're at the chronic toxicity level for selenium. And now every nutrient, like what toxicity looks like is a little bit different. With selenium, you have symptoms like hair falling out, uh, fingernails falling out. Um, there's like rashes and gastrointestinal symptoms, fatigue and irritability. And now here is one of the most fascinating side effects because I don't know any other nutrient where this is a symptom of toxicity. Uh, one of the symptoms of selenium toxicity is garlic breath without the garlic. Just an interest to, to know about. It's crazy, right? Like I don't, I don't know the biochemistry of how that's happening, but I, I think it's fascinating. And then even like below, like getting too much selenium but not quite enough to cause toxicity, there is some science showing that that could potentially be causing some problems with insulin signaling and insulin sensitivity may be increasing the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So we definitely want to be, again, so like steering well clear of the tolerable upper limit of selenium. And I think that 10 Brazil nuts, first of all, Brazil nuts are tasty AF, and it is very easy to eat 10. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, so knowing this is, is really important. So 10 once in a while, um, half a bag once in a while, is going to be fine. Um, there is no acute toxicity level set for selenium. That doesn't mean there isn't an amount that would be acutely toxic. It just means we don't really know what it is. Um, but like, 
if, if half a bag was causing acute selenium toxicity, you wouldn't be able to buy half a bag, right? Like, right. You're fine. You're fine. It's, it's if we were having a half a bag every single day for like four months or straight, even we might... 10 every single day for four or months. Even I mean, 10. that's, that's okay. the challenge, right? Okay. So if you eat Brazil nuts every single day, limiting to three or four, so where selenium intake is staying below the tolerable upper limit is the prudent course of action. Um, if you're having it once in a while and you want 10 in one go or 20, whatever, for most, unless you have some like weird other sources of um, dietary selenium, like, or you're taking um, selenium supplements, like unless there's some other source that's bringing your levels right. up, you don't need to worry about it. But, uh, but definitely, yeah, Brazil nuts are, are for sure one of the very few foods, like we don't really see chronic toxicity from foods very often. There's really only, like if I think about it, I can think of three foods that we actually need to be aware of the capacity to hit chronic toxicity levels of certain nutrients from them. Brazil nuts is one of them. Liver is another. So liver has um, a whack load of vitamin A and quite a lot of copper, um, enough that if you were eating uh, one to two servings a day, um, so four to eight ounces measured raw, so three to six ounces measured cooked, every single day you could hit those chronic toxicity levels for vitamin A and copper. Um, so definitely like staying below liver daily is recommended. And then the other one is there's certain types of seaweed, kelp is I think the most common, that have like so much iodine that you can hit iodine toxicity with having kelp every day. So the other more common varieties of, of seaweed that you would get like nori sheets, like what's in um, sushi, definitely like at a level of iodine that is gonna be fine if you're having a serving or two per day. But um, kelp like kombu, which is used to make dashi, we wanna be making sure like dashi, it's very diluted. You don't need to worry about like it's, you're using one or two sheets for an entire batch of broth. So you don't necessarily have to worry about how much iodine there is unless you're drinking the entire pot, which I guess some people might do, right? Like some people might just make it a pot of dashi and drink the whole pot. So then that is somewhere, some another place to be aware of. This is another food that is such a great source of this important nutrient that we can actually overdo it. Most of the time, we only see toxic levels of nutrients in the context of supplementation. So I uh, heard that vitamin A is really good for something, my immune system or my eyesight. Uh, so I'm taking this dose, this supplement of vitamin A. I didn't check with my doctor, right? This is really common when we're taking supplements to just go, oh, I see this influencer <laughs> recommending the supplement, all I'm gonna go get it. Or I read about the supplement in this magazine article, so I'm gonna go get it, right? We just, we kind of think of supplements as um, a, a DIY thing to do, but there's so many interactions between supplements, between supplements and medications, and depending on the context of your diet, you could hit too much. So it is really important to be like telling your doctor or working with a registered dietitian, like d telling a healthcare provider, uh, yeah, this is how I eat and these are my supplements. Because if I took this vitamin A supplement that I read about online, and then I'm also taking a multivitamin that has a lot of vitamin A in it, that's the type of situation where we see vitamin A toxicity. Right. It's called hypervitaminosis A. So um, with selenium, Brazil nuts are really the only food that's that's going to be that high. Our other best sources of selenium are seafood, but there's no seafood that's like in that amount of selenium. So does someone need to worry times. if they're having three or four Brazil nuts and they're eating seafood every day? Is that a concern? We hear so much about all this like food fear online and like these are really health promoting foods, but you can also overdo stuff. So it's hard to like, um, not see something as like, oh, well, then I should just avoid it altogether, right? And that's what we want to avoid doing that. But like if someone is has heard about how great selenium is and they're taking their, you know, one to three Brazil nuts a day, and they also hear, heard about how good fish is and they're eating their, you know, one serving of fish a day, can that like potentially cause a problem or is that not really a concern? Um let me actually like look up how much selenium is in a couple of different types of fish so we can okay. actually do the math. 
Cool. Okay, so I looked up the selenium content of sardines, uh, coho, salmon, and a skipjack tuna, which is the most common type of tuna used in like light tuna, which like canned tuna. So the sardines have about 60 micrograms of selenium, so a little bit over 100% daily value. So that would basically mean that you would want to limit your Brazil nuts to two or three instead of three or four. And then both the salmon and the tuna was closer to 40 micrograms, so like three quarters of the selenium for the day. Again, though, I think that would mean if you're eating fish every day, if that's the kind of range where fish is, um, and we're we're like well above meeting our selenium needs, and we're just trying to like give ourselves some space from the tolerable upper limit. I think that if we're eating fish every day, the the prudent course of action would be to limit Brazil nuts, maybe even to one or two, just because we don't want to be always like riding the line of of the maximum of the tolerable upper limit with selenium, especially given that some like lower than that level might still be increasing risk of type 2 diabetes. Gotcha. Well, that's good to know because maybe someone really doesn't like seafood and they can just have their Brazil nuts and maybe someone just doesn't like Brazil nuts, although I don't know who that person would be, but like <laughs> that's possible. And you can do a mixture of both, but just being cautious, but again, not letting yourself fall into any kind of fear around that food because it's about how much uh what do you call it? the dose response right is yeah. what we need to be aware of so i think okay. the other the other thing here i think that's really worth mentioning is we're kind of walking close to that line about talking about miracle foods right so those foods that are like oh just eat whatever right just eat three brazil nuts a day and your thyroid will be whatever <laughs> the claims are right right the, the challenge with miracle foods is not just that sometimes you can overdo nutrients, right? If you are like, oh yeah, I'm going to have Brazil nuts every single day. Like, look, like the math shows how quickly we can get to chronic selenium toxicity and have some pretty nasty health effects from that. So we definitely don't want to overdo Brazil nuts, even if they are an amazing source of a really important nutrient. But the other challenge is whenever you have that like miracle food mentality, then you're you're focusing on one food or a small handful of foods that can displace other nutritionally important foods like other nuts and seeds have lots of really valuable nutrition. Sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds are really high in vitamin E. Pumpkin seeds are really high in magnesium. You've got some really beneficial um, phytonutrients in almonds. Almonds have a bunch of studies showing benefits, right? You've got all those monounsaturated fats and cashews. Like there's, there's other great things. You've got alpha linolenic acid and walnuts. Like there's other <laughs> nuts that are really beneficial. So if we're always picking Brazil nuts, not only do we risk overdoing selenium, but we're also missing out on the benefits of a diversity of nuts and seeds. So the other, the other piece of this is Yes, Mix it up. definitely overdue Brazil nuts. <laughs> it's not just about too much selenium. It's also about missing out on what a diversity of similar foods could offer us. Right. Hooray for mixed nuts. Definitely. <laughs> well, uh, wow, that was a lot. I just learned so much about selenium. That was great. Thank you so much for that. But if we have someone who's listening who wants to like dive in even more to selenium, is there a place they can go read um, in depth about that nutrient? So especially if you want to kind of get into understanding selenium toxicity and what how much selenium is in like different types of seafood, like if you if you are worried about writing that line, I would recommend going to my website, Nutribor.com. So every nutrient has a really detailed article that lists all of the biological rules of that nutrient and then all of the different health conditions not getting enough of that nutrient are associated with. So you can understand the link between low selenium and thyroid disease, for example, in this case. And then there's a section on how much we need, what the daily values are for different demographics, and then what happens if we get too much. And then best uh, food sources and good food sources are listed as well. So that's where like, if you really like are, are interested in, in understanding in depth how a nutrient um, is impacting our health and including that like happy medium range, 
I would say head to the website. That's going to be the best resource. That's great. Thanks, Dr. Sarah. No problem.